Now Eric McCormick stars as Grant McLaren in a new Netflix series, Travelers. That brings people from 300 years in the future back to 2016 to inhabit the bodies of people about to die in order to take on a mission, change the future. What I was drawn to from the beginning is that the time travel part of it is not like old, time tunnel movies, McCormick tells Parade.com in this exclusive interview. The time thing happens pretty quickly and then we're here. We're in 2016 and we're carrying out our job. So it really becomes much more of a domestic espionage show within the first 10 minutes. One thing that sets it apart from other time travel movies is that the people from the future don't arrive with their bodies intact. Rather, their consciousness takes over the bodies of people about to die, so they also have to take over their lives, complicating their mission. If my wife or my FBI partner were to find out that Grant was meeting secretly with strangers, we could blow our cover at any time, McCormick says. That's the fun part of the show. We have to live these lives and then, at a moment's notice, slip out of them and come and carry out our jobs. Read more of the interview in which the Will and Grace and Perception star goes into more depth about Travelers and shares his feelings about a potential Will and Grace reunion. This is a sci-fi show but it's more than that. How would you describe it? The director of the pilot is Nick Heron from the UK, who did some Sherlock's and some Doctor Who's. The tone, he said, is moody and a little scary. The rest of our directors over the course of the season carried that through, so the whole feel is different. These people from the future have figured out time travel, but only partially because they don't bring their bodies back, they just bring their minds. You're not sending yourself through the mail and landing on someone's porch going, Hi, here's my message for you. You're sending information. They're sending information except it's their consciousness. They're truly sending their essence and landing in the bodies of people that are moments from death. And they know that they're moments from death because they have the historical record of everything. They don't have it from the 50s because there was no way of keeping track of such things. But because of our technology now, because of social media, GPS and the various ways that we track each other, we actually have record of exactly when and where people were about to die. So just like a car that's about to go over a cliff, we jump into that car before it goes over the cliff. You play Grant McLaren, tell me a little bit about who he is. Initially. He's your average FBI guy working out at a field office in the Pacific Northwest. He's married, no kids. He doesn't know it, but he's going to be killed in an FBI operation. However, the people from the future know it, and so Traveler 3468 takes over Grand McLaren's body. He is not unlike him, but a little more driven, a little bit more of a leader. That's really where the show lives. These five people, I say five people because there are five travelers in the show but there are thousands all over the world as we'll learn in the second and third episodes, are just part of a much bigger operation. But each of us have the same dilemma, we have to take over the lives of these people whose bodies we've landed in and we have to stay in them. We're not going home. It's a one-way ticket. The character development over the first season is watching us, I guess what they used to call, go native, in the old days of war. All of a sudden, we're here, and we're kind of liking it here. It's better than the future. And even though we have our jobs to do, here is actually pretty special, not for the traveler who jumps into the body of the drug addict, but for Grant. Suddenly he's got a nice home and he's got a woman he's never met before but he starts to fall for. It's part of the assignment they didn't see coming. Which is interesting because one of the other time travelers that comes back is somebody Grant was romantically involved with in the future, right? Yeah. And that is a level of fraternization that we're not supposed to be doing because these five characters in 2016 have never met and would never have met. The only thing they have in common is they all were supposed to die on the same day. But because we chose their bodies as hosts, suddenly they have to convene secretly for futuristic reasons. 
It's interesting because the whole time travel conundrum with this is they come back to save the future, but if they actually save the future, would they have needed to come back? One thing, we'll learn, is that there's a code that they live by, which is that the missions that they're carrying out are basically at the peril of our own birth. Meaning, the very things we're changing might, for all we know, so affect the future that 300 years from now, none of us would even